Hello everyone in the Abhimanyu IS again with a new topic I welcome you all in the concept series of mine myself Ravish Watts and today our concept video topic is Quangos Kyao U A N G O S this is a term which no one or I would say that some of the few would have heard and it is a part of the political science the polity part and the political science optional also so let's look what it is because it is having high chance to come in the exam what is Quangos and those students who wants to join the Indian Polity module of mine in the Abhimanyu IS, I welcome you all and I am giving three days free trial in the Abhimanyu IS for the Indian Polity, Polity. So those students who wants to join, have a look on this. So what is Quangos? Let's see the salient features of the Quangos. Quango is an acronym for the Quasi-Autonomous Non-Governmental Organizations. Right? Quasi-autonomous, which are something related to the judicial or somewhat judicial non-government organizations, which are NGO. So those NGOs which are having some sort of judicial and some sort of association with the judicial institutions, they are called Quangos. Then it refers to anybody carrying out government functions staffed by appointees rather than ministers or the civil servants. So those NGOs which are having the individuals who are having interest in the government services and mostly doing the government work in the interest of the government services, in the interest of the public services, but not coming from the civil services, which are the bureaucracy or from the ministerships. So they are the considered as Quangos. Then they include bodies with executive functions of various kinds. They do a number of works, right? Documentary works, field works, research work, development works, number of works they do in the civil society, as well as advisory committees and tribunals, as I just mentioned, that they are quasi, which simply means somewhat judicial and tribunals are the, for, for the form of judicial organization having name called alternative dispute resolution mechanism or the ADR. Then the quasi autonomous status of Congo means that they are the part of arms length government which means they are having some sort of direct association with the government directly or indirectly. Then the non-governmental character means that they are part of non-elected state which is simply that they are the, they are the kind of self-help groups which have been constituted and now they are delivering their inputs for the society's development, upliftment and inclusiveness in the society. Then what are the advantages of the Kwangos? We have just read about what are the Kwangos, what are the composition, what are the strength, what is the work profile. Now what are the advantages of it? So first they allow government to call on the experience, expertise and specialist knowledge of outside advisors. So they are the more field experts in, into their different fields. So they are having the functional specialization in their particular fields and the most important example not of Kwango, but on the same lines of Kwango, we are having the lateral entries these days into the civil services or into the higher civil services, but they cannot be considered as the Kwangos. The reason being the Kwangos are having association with the government, but they are not the part of bureaucracy, but lateral entries are considered as a part of bureaucracy. So this is a thin line of difference between the Kwangos and the lateral entry services. They reduce the burden of the work of the official government departments and the agencies because in the higher ministries or in the central or the state ministries we have a number of works and this is why the reason being that in the government it is often said that government works happens in months and in years the reason being they have a lot of works to do so actually they provide efficiency compatibility and probity and effectiveness into the government organization so this is the most important advantage of the Kwangos as an institution into the governments then what are the disadvantages of the Kwangos because this is also very important to understand. So first they expand the range of ministerial patronages so contribute to the centralization of political powers because the Kwangos are directly or indirectly associated with the government so obviously no one works in free everyone demands something in the form of remuneration or in the form of grants so obviously the Kwangos will also be getting some sort of remuneration power privileges on the same lines of the ministers so this is against the against the democratic form of government or this is against the parliamentary form of government this is also often criticized in the perspective of the Kwangos. Then they weaken the democratic accountability by reducing the ability of representative institutions to oversee the working of government because we are the parliamentary form of government or even by the presidential form of government the people are representing us and they are called our legislatures they are called our executives but the time some known 
representative or non-accountable persons gets into the part of the government. So that puts a major question on the credibility and on the checks and balance of the government organization. So this is why in the second point it is criticized that the role of Congo is, some, is subjected to no checks and balance and can lead to less accountability. Third, they foster balkanization by making public admin more disjointed and less systematic because if the government, if the bureaucracy, if the civil servants, if the ministries are not able to work, so it is the responsibility of the public to question them. It is not the responsibility of these Kwangos to come and to take the role of these organizations because otherwise if they will do some sort of work, no one can question them and there will be a chance of absoluteness and there will be chance of corruption because it is also said that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely but if the Kwangos will be given such kind of power so there is more chance of becoming absolute power and absolute balkanization of the government organization. So this much is enough for the Kwangos to understand what is a Kwango, what is the composition strength I made you write and I made you learn about that then advantages and disadvantages. So if any time of any sort of questions comes directly or indirectly into, the UP, U, into your UPSC means exam, so you can easily write. Thank you so much. We'll meet you on the next day with the next topic. Thank you. Mm -hmm.